Okay, so uh, chapter 12, uh, 12.9, we're moving on to constrained motion problems. What do we mean by constrained motion? I'm talking about like two blocks or two objects that are maybe connected by a rope, or maybe you've got some pulleys and ropes. This, you know, the, this rope right here is kind of wrapped around this pulley. Uh, you can imagine down here that the velocity of block A is uh, somehow related to the velocity of block B. Um, and that's just it. There's a relationship between the velocity of A and the velocity of B. So uh, this definition for, for motion of members which are maybe interconnected uh, like by a rope, there's a relationship between the two objects' velocities and their change of position and, and acceleration, things like that. <clears throat> you can imagine, you know, what if you pull at this block A to the left two meters per second. Can, can you visualize that? Can you see this going and, and this pulling this rope over? Uh, this rope over here is going to the left. Uh, this, this rope right here is going around this pulley. Um, can you see that, that this, this length of the rope is um, expanding, is, is lengthening, whereas these two are, um, are shortening? Uh, if I pull at A with two meters per second, uh, block B is going to go at one meter per second. Okay. Does that make sense? Does that logic do, lo, is that logical uh, to you? Um, I, I think you, we could visualize that. Uh, but for more complicated problems, um, it, it may not be easy to to see that. Um, so we need to kind of get a uh, get get a, a system, a process for these problems uh, so we can solve any type of problem no matter uh, whether it's just one rope, two ropes. Um, th this one is, is pretty straightforward and it's re it really just turns out to be uh, the relationship of kind of the, the number of these uh, ropes right here. Um, but, but here's a process <clears throat> that we can do for these constrained motion uh, problems. Step one, let's write an equation. So let's write an equation for the length of the rope, for the length of the rope. All right, so let's write an equation for the length of the rope. So this rope, um, wh wh where do you want to start? Maybe, maybe we start right here. So, so this rope right here, uh, the length, so I'm going to leave a little, little bit of space here. And I'm going to say um, maybe L total, the total length of the rope would be this dimension B plus this dimension right here Y plus it goes around this pulley uh, I'd say it goes halfway around that circular pulley so maybe half of the, the whole uh, circumference 2 pi uh, R2 the radius of that pulley plus this is Y and you see, this is why, uh, even after it starts moving, um, we're defining that y, and so, you know, this length is going to be y, just like that length is going to be y. Then we go, um, I would say, a quarter or a fourth of the way around the circumference of that pulley. So what if we say plus one-fourth um, of the whole uh, circumference of that uh, pulley, uh, plus... X. I think that's a good equation for the length of that rope, right? Even after it starts moving, the, you know, in, you can imagine after it starts moving, it, that length is, is still X, the, this Y might be, there are a few things that might be changing, right? Uh, but that is the, the length of the rope. All right, now, step two, let's take the derivative of L total. So let's take derivative of that length of the rope. Let's take the derivative of that length of the rope. So the derivative of L total uh, with respect to time, what would be the derivative of this length B? Do you see what that length B is? That length B is from this uh, point to, to that point. And that, even after it starts moving, that is not changing. That is a constant dimension b. And what's the derivative of a constant? It's not changing in time. It's zero. 
All right, so the derivative of b right here would be 0. What's the derivative of y? The derivative of that, well, that that is changing. That That is changing. It, it's measured from this fixed point to this point pulley, but this pulley uh, along with this block is moving up. So let's just say y dot. Remember that dot is just the time rate of change of that length y. Now what is the derivative of this right here? Um, it, even after it's moving, that rope is still going to go halfway around that pulley, uh, so that would be a constant. So its derivative is zero. And then we've got another y dot over here on this side. And then we've got another constant, uh, and then we've got x dot. So, so those um, those things that are constant when you take the derivative, they're equal to zero. But those dimensions that are are moving with the um, block, that are changing with the block, um, are changing. We can take their time rate of change. And what is this going to be equal to? The derivative of the total length of the rope. Let's say this rope was, you know, I don't know, maybe 10 meters long. After I pull A to the left and B goes up, isn't the length of the rope still 10 meters long? That In the, this problem, and the problems that the way I like to do these, that length of the rope is constant, and so its derivative is zero. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to write an equation for the length of the rope, we're going to take the derivative of L total and set to 0. Let's take the derivative of L total and set to 0. Now, what is this y dot right here? And what is this x dot? Think about this y dot. y dot is the time rate of change of this dimension y. The time rate of change of that dimension, the time rate of change of that um Position. Wouldn't you say that, that that y value is the position of block B? And the time rate of change of that position of block B would be velocity. So, so that's the velocity of B. Same thing right here. This would be the velocity of A, right? The, the rate of change of that position of block A is velocity of A. And so these... Um, time rate of change of these dimensions are going to be velocities. So, so then we have our equation right here. 2VB um, plus VA equals 0. And so there's our relationship. There's our relationship. So if this is 2, then what does that math make our VB out to? Actually makes it out to negative 1. All right, we'll talk about this, but that's just because this 2 is going out, this v this other v is coming in so one is opposite uh, from the other okay you can take the derivative again and similarly uh, your accelerations will be uh, the, the same right right the the time rate of change of velocity would be acceleration of a acceleration of b Okay, there's a few things. Uh, this, if I plugged in positive 2, this came out to negative 1 because um, 1 is out, 1 is in. Uh, so for my problems, um, I, I kind of like to think of these. All of my equations are positive out. So I'm going to say all equations are positive out. Out, right. So this y value is, is positive if it's going out. This x value positive if it's going out. Uh, same thing with velocities and accelerations. So this negative means it's actually kind of going in. Uh, that y value is decreasing. Uh, so the velocity of b would be up. Okay, so here's the process. Write an equation for the length of the rope. Take the derivative of that and set it equal to zero if your L total is not changing, which is how I like to think of these problems. Now, a few other rules uh, to think about. So I just said all equations positive out, so let's uh, say always define lengths, define lengths as positive out, okay? And so, 
all of our equations will be positive out. Always define lengths. Always define lengths um, from a fixed point. All right, from a fixed point. We don't want to be defining our lengths from a moving target, uh, otherwise our derivative would not be equal to velocity. So all these rules are going to make it such that the derivative of y dot is exactly equal to v of that uh, in that dimension, in that direction. All right. So another thing, always define lengths, always define lengths um, in the direction of the velocity, in the direction of velocity. All right, that way, uh, again, th these are making it such that the derivative of our length is equal to velocity. And one last thing, uh, let's just go ahead and neglect the constants. Neglect constants uh, because they're going to drop out of our equations. All right, so if you use that process for these problems, uh, then once it gets uh, pretty interesting, you know, pretty difficult, um, the math will kind of show you and you can calculate these velocities and accelerations when you can't intuitively uh, just look at it and, and figure it out on your own.